Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with jazz guitarist and composer Raleigh Michich. He spent his childhood in Siberia, then came to the Berklee College of Music in Boston, and now lives in New York. His latest album is 2016's Night Music, and it's the culmination of him garnering a cult-like following amongst his music fans with his mix of jazz and haunting melodies from the Balkans. So get to know him and dig this interview, my friends. Hey, thank you again for taking some time out. I appreciate it. Sure, my pleasure. So I'm going to go ahead and start off here and just ask you, just kind of get a brief synopsis of what has been going on with you lately. All right, well, I guess I have uh, two records out, brand new releases. One is uh, called Night Music, and that's uh, with my quartet. And the other one is called Inspired, and that um, that's a project that's featuring four different guitarists, and it's kind of dedicated to uh, Jim Hall. So... Um, I guess uh, those two projects, I mean, they came, both came out in um, this fall. So I've been pretty busy with, with both projects. What kind of influence did Jim Hall play in you, in, in your music? Wow, well, <laughs> huge, huge. I mean, he's probably, you know, he's like one of my idols so, so many, on so many different levels, you know, uh, musically and, you know, personally. And uh, he's, he's, been, he's really been a huge influence to, to me, you know. You know, I, I I moved I moved to the United States in '95 uh, to study here. I'm originally from Belgrade, Serbia, and actually one of the first shows that I've seen was uh, Jim Hall. You know, he came to Boston with his uh, quartet, and, and it just blew my mind. You know, I was you know it was it was such a beautiful such a beautiful concert. You know, and I was mesmerized. You know, it just they start playing, and it felt like three seconds later the show was done you know that you know which i was just like you know in the music and it kind of really made me feel oh yeah this is really what i want to do so you know that, that was a huge you know impact just seeing him live and then later on you know i got to meet him and you know talk to him and he was really just a great guy and a huge inspiration so let's talk about your childhood in serbia what describe to me how with your family and with your upbringing how you got into music and more specifically jazz so uh, yeah, I started as a young kid. I started playing violin, and you know I was studying classical music. And by the time I was um, thirteen, I switched to guitar. And uh, you know I played a classical guitar, and I, you know of course I loved you know rock music, and I was you know playing some rock music. But you know my family was really into classical music. Both my parents and my grandparents were like big fans of classical music. So there was classical music going on all the time in my house. Uh, and, you know, they had some jazz records that, you know, I was eventually put on and listened to. And uh, during, you know, during that time when I was a teenager, it was kind of like, you know, dark times in, in, in Serbia where I grew up. Actually, it was back then it was Yugoslavia. It was a country that was kind of starting to fall apart. And, uh, you know, the war erupted in, in the early 90s, the war in Bosnia. So, so, but there was a lot of jazz clubs. There was a lot of jazz clubs in Belgrade. And those were kind of like the safe places to go for somebody who was like, you know, like who was my age. You know, you can just go there and listen to music and people will be friendly. And it, that really got me, you know, into, into jazz, listening to all, you know, great jazz musicians and then, you know, checking out uh, recordings and albums. So, and by the time I was 17 and 18, you know, I knew, yeah, I, this is the music I really love and this is what I want to do. So that, that was that was a big that, that was a big part of it. There was always I think you know Yugoslavia was one of the countries that was it was never under Russia. You always had you know um, you always had the jazz culture like in the fifties and sixties there was like Voice of America and a lot of jazz artists who came you know and play in Belgrade and they had big festivals so everybody was there Miles Davis, Dizzy Gillespie. So There's a big tradition of jazz actually there, especially considering you know surrounding countries we didn't have that at all. So I think, you know, that also has to do a lot with, you know, my upbringing and love for jazz as well. What were some of the albums you were listening to that were really huge for you that made an influence? Oh, it's hard to remember right now. I mean, it was. I remember it was very hard to get some albums back then. You know, there was no, like, internet. There was no, you know, such thing. And we didn't have really, like, you know, you had a record store. You can go and buy a vinyl, you know, buy a cassette later. And, you know, and basically you would get what they had there, you know, so you, you had, it was very limited, you know. Um, yeah. So I, re, I remember listening, you know, I had, um, my parents had a couple of records, you know, I remember uh, one one of the records that had a huge influence on me was, uh, you know, uh, Friday Night in San Francisco by 
Paco de Lucia, John McLaughlin, and Aldi Miola. I remember, like, you know, hearing three guitars, you know, and I was like, wow, oh, this is like <laughs> something very different from the time, you know, when I was playing the classical music, and I realized, oh, this is really great, you know, improvisation. And, you know, and then I had, you know, I had some uh, different records. I had some, you know, West Montgomery, some uh, some Pat Metini records, and uh, it was very it was very eclectic mix of records I was listening, you know, in those young, you know, when I was very young, and then later on, I kind of like you know find my you know style that I liked and more and more more focused on certain 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 people. So when did you come to the United States, and what brought you here? Well, I came in 1995, and I came basically I came to study. I finished high school in Serbia, and, and I you know I wanted to study uh, jazz composition and jazz guitar, and I applied to three schools in states, and you know I got accepted in all three. And then Berkeley College of Music in Boston gave me you know, the biggest scholarship, so I decided to go there, and that was my number one choice anyway. So I came in '95, and you know I started the uh, jazz composition and guitar, and uh, I was there until '99 when I graduated from from Berkeley. That had to be a very uniquely hard time for you there in the mid '90s to leave your homeland and come to the states. Yeah, you're right. Well, you know, in '95 when I left, the things calmed down a little bit. You know, there was like, you know, the war stopped, and you know, it was, it was kind of actually, it was, it was okay. But then, like toward the end of the '90s, there was another crisis, and then in the south of Serbia and Kosovo, and you know, that was really unpleasant. And then the bombing of Serbia, and I was here, so yeah, that that was a pretty difficult time, um, I have to say. But you know, um, as an artist, you you know, you can just do one thing, and that is like, you know, really. Uh, try to express yourself through the music, and that really helped me a lot. You know, go just to go past that and just realize, you know, who I am and who I want to be in that in that regard. So, what was it like the first times in the states when you did actually perform live? How did it feel to be in America and to be on a stage performing? Oh, it was great. I mean, you're kidding me. It's like it was my dream. So, like you know, and it's, it, it's it's fantastic, and that's why I'm still here. You know, it's a, it's definitely the best place to be. You know, I I lived in Boston for actually five years, and I moved to New York in 2000, and, you know, I've been in Europe s since then, so again, I guess 16 years, and, and it's fantastic, you know, it's really, you get to play with the best musicians, you get to hear the best musicians all the time, and, you know, it's just a great environment, you know, it's, it's just a very, very creative environment, and, you know, you feel you can do anything, really. So when you do look back on your career, especially, you know, being here in the States, say 16 years, it's been... How do you feel about your career, your, your, you know, performing and the output on albums? How do you feel about everything? Well, I feel I feel great. I mean, feel very very blessed. You know, they had opportunity to work with some some of the amazing artists. You know, uh, uh, had opportunity to 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 create my music and perform my music, and you know, just being able to to be a full time musician. Even you know, even in this day of age, it's very, it's very hard. Even just you know to make a living as musicians. So I feel very fortunate in that regard, you know. And just and the fact that I get to play with the, all these great musicians really is, you know, I'm, I'm I feel I'm very lucky. So you did mention Jim Hall and you've mentioned live shows, but if you could go back in time, this is kind of the fantasy question here, and and <laughs> okay. see and see somebody live. Who else would you have wanted to see live if you could do that? Wow, well, there's so many. I mean, uh, definitely Charlie Christian. I would love to see him live. And Wes Montgomery, definitely love to see him live. You know, And then uh, that's from the guitar players, of course, Miles Davis. You know, I would love to see some of his <laughs> earlier bands and Charles Mingus. I mean, there, there, there are so many. There are so many jazz great musicians that lived, you know, before I was even born, <laughs> you know. So, yeah, yeah this is probably going to be a very, very long list. But those are the few that, you know, come to my mind right away. So, you know, you're in New York City, and yeah. you're, you're a jazz musician. Talk, talk to me about the health of jazz in 2016. This, I mean, New York is the hub in the world of jazz. How is jazz doing these days? I think it's great. I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's very strong. There's, you know, I think in New York there's, so many clubs, and um, and it's not only one scene. There's many different scenes, you know. There's many different kind of like it's not genres anymore, but it's great. I think it's it's really developing, and uh, I think um, there's a big factor of of a global music, but in a good sense, you know, people coming from all over the world and bring something different to the language, and then create their own thing. 
Um, but I also feel in New York there's a certain tradition that's kind of being kept alive and uh, and it's and it's doing really well. And uh, I feel that you know it's one of those places that you can really do your thing and express yourself no matter what style it is and still find a certain audience and the musicians who think alike and uh that i think that's very rare for the for you know the rest of the places and you know i travel a lot and you know i love going to different places but um that's one of the things that you don't see anywhere else so what is the future for you let's say we talk here in about 10 15 years down the line i'm the first thing I say is what's going on, like I did in this interview. Right. What are you going to tell me? What, do, what, do you, what are you going to want to tell me that's happened? What do you see happening in your career? Well, I mean, I'm not, really not sure. I can't tell what's going to happen, but what we'll have to do is just continue creating music. I mean, I love writing my own music. Uh, that's, you know, that's really um, one of the things that I really enjoy the most and uh, hopefully be able to perform it as well and hopefully, you know, be able to continue to perform with some of my you know, musicians that I love and some of my idols, you know, I felt very fortunate uh, to be able to play with, you know, Tom Harrell. And, uh, you know, he was part of uh, uh, one of my albums in 2006. We did the album called Serbia. And, I, you know, and then I did um, a recording last year that came out for his uh, chamber group, his ensemble called The First Impressions, and that was a fantastic uh, project. And also working uh, with late uh, Don uh, Friedman, who was a phenomenal jazz piano player. So I think, you know, balancing between what I have to do creatively and then what I can also offer to other musicians as a guitarist. And, you know, that's, that's, that's really the road I want to take to, to both, both things. So hopefully, you know, that will continue. Right on. Let me ask you this. Why do you love jazz? What I love jazz? Well, I don't know. It's like uh, so many different things about it I love. I mean, I guess, you know, it's the freedom of jazz that I love the most, the freedom to, to create and to be yourself and um, really um, not worry about what somebody else might think and really try to express yourself that way. I think that's the best part about jazz. You get to be who you are, really. So of all the people that you played for, all the people that have listened to your music, what's one of the best compliments you've ever received? Hmm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't remember. I mean, uh, it's it's you know. Uh, I always take everything with a grain of salt, you know. Especially compliments. I'm pretty critical of myself, but uh, it's been it's been a lot. You know, a lot of good things have been happening lately, and, and that's really really great. So, um, you know, just the fact that I'm able to do this is you know is a, is a, you know is it's a great experience. So um, I'm not sure about the compliments. You have to ask some other musicians <laughs> about that. That's cool. I dig it. I yeah. dig it. So let me ask you this. Everyone has a version of who you are, your family, your friends, the, those that you play for live. But who do you think you are? When you wake up and approach the world, who are you? Well, I mean, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, I guess uh, another human being who's trying to, you know, make the world a little bit better and, you know, uh, trying to, you know, give something good to the rest of the people, you know, personally and hopefully through the music too, you know, I think, you know, I'm also a, a husband and a father and I'm, you know, really proud of that. So um, between those things, yeah, that, you know, that all, that what makes me happy, hopefully I make other people happy too in the same way. I like that answer. I think that kind of wraps everything up. I appreciate right. you taking your time. I really do dig the new album, Night Music. I've had a great time listening to it. Oh, thank and, uh, you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thank you again. Good luck with everything. And hopefully at some point we can see you swing through Kansas City. Yeah, I would love to. I see, you know, the, the record's been getting some really nice airplay down here with you guys. Hopefully I'll be there soon. Sounds wonderful, man. Thank you. Send my best to New York. All right, thanks, Joe. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players all over the world. And thanks to Raleigh for his time, his music, and his stories. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com, and for everything Neon Jazz, the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.